Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Chodesh Tov, Besiman Tov to everyone. Erev Shabbat Kodesh, Perashiot, Matot and Mas'e, at least outside of Israel. Makam Nahwan, Lighthouse Torah Project, dedicated Le'ilui Nishmat, Devorah Feige Bat Shemuel, as well as Le'ilui Nishmat, Ora Devorah Bat Shemuel, and for the Refua Shelema of Menachem Mendel, Ben Sarabasha, Asher Ben Malka and Hannah Bat Shani. The iTorah.com dedication for the Shiduchim of Nehamadina Bat Hanabatia, Eliyahu Haim Ben Esther, Sara Simha Bat Sofi, and Rahel Penina Bat Jenny. Today, Rosh Chodesh Menachem Av, as we heard yesterday, the Hilula of Aharon Kohen. Aharon Kohen, as we know, was the older brother of Moshe Rabbeinu, brother of Miriam and Moshe. And through the leadership of these three great giants, Am Israel went through the desert in the Midbar, in the Zehut of Moshe. The man came down in the Zehut of Miriam. The water followed the Jewish people. And in the Zehut of Aharon, we had the Anane Kavod, known as the clouds of glory. As we discussed in the past, these clouds basically were a multi-protection system for Am Israel from all areas, from the front, from the back, from the left, from the right, from the top, from the bottom. And during the 40 years of journey of Bnei Israel, we had protection and salvation. In a way, the celebration of Sukkot reminds us of the Anane Kavod. And in a way, the celebration of Sukkot is connected to Aharon Kohen. But although the Anane Kavod today don't exist in the official capacity as it did in the time of our fathers, forefathers, but nevertheless, there is an invisible Anane Kavod. There is an invisible element that can activate the same goal and the same achievement of the clouds of glory. And this is the topic of Shalom. Shalom does not need my introduction. Shalom is one of the names of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shalom is a word that is very common in the Jewish prayer books, in whatever things we do, if it's the Kaddish, if it's the Birkat Amazon, if it's the Amida, if it's Birkat Kohanim, if it's the blessing that parents give to the children on a Friday night. So we all are very, very, very familiar with the word Shalom. As I said before, the Zohar Kadosh writes that Shalom is one of the names of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And as you may have heard this inside in the main sanctuary a few moments ago, that Aharon Kohen, Alav Shalom, is the only person in the Torah that the Torah tells us exactly when he passed away. No one else. All the other Sadiqim, all the holy Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov, and Sarah, Rivka, Rahel, Leah, Yosef, Sadiq, Moshe Rabbeinu, etc., we learn from different sources when they passed away. And that's why you have many times, there are many wonderful emails that we receive. I receive an email, for example, every week, Mehila, 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 please forgive me. Please forgive me, but I need silence in the room. Thank you. We receive your site lists. We receive a list that tells you every day is the your site of this Sadiq, etc. Then the, the younger years, meaning to say the years closer to us, is very simple. We have records dating up to maybe a thousand years ago. But before, how did we learn? How did we learn or where do we learn from when Moshe Rabbeinu passed away? Actually, it's a Gemara in Kiddushin and other Sadiqim. But Aharon Kohen, we don't have to do research. The Pasuk says, The first day of the fifth month. And this refers to the month of Menachem Av. Amen. So you may ask, 
which you, it's your right to ask, and you should ask, why from all of the Sadiqim, Aharon Kohen gets this privilege? And I can even increase this question by sharing with the Kahal that I believe that the Torah writes three times about the passing of Aharon Kohen. We're going to see it in the Prashiot. You know why? Short answer. Because the menu of the day from today till after Tisha Av is the Middah of Aharon. Shalom, Shalom. Allowed, I'd like to welcome at this time Rabbi Haim Palachi, Mo'ib Kolhai. He's here now. I know he left the world over 200 years ago. But we have a tradition that says that when we quote from the Sepharim of the Sadiqim and we mention their names, the Pasuk says in uh, Shira Shirim, Dobev Sifte Yeshenim, the murmuring, the movement of the lips of the righteous. And definitely, since we're going to read from his Sefer, he's with us. So it says, number one, Bahodesh Azeh, Yechaven Letaken Midat Hod. He writes in code. Ba'ezat Hashem, I'll expand this a bit. He says, in this month, you need to work in the attribute of Aharon Kohen. I'll explain. Maybe a few weeks ago, actually more than a few weeks, months, we did the Omer. What is the Omer? We count every night. We know the rabbinical commandment. We know that we discussed that the seven weeks of the Omer, they connect to the seven Sadiqim of Am Israel, seven Ushpizin. The fifth week of the Omer belongs to Aharon Kohen. And we explain in that day or that week that the Midah of Aharon Kohen is known as Hod. Hod has different meanings. One meaning is hod. Hod vehadar lebusha. Splendor. Beauty. So one explanation says the importance of beautifying misvot. We understand that. There is such a commandment, technically speaking, ze keli ve'anvehu. This is my God and I will adorn him. Rashi says, this refers to making the mizvot beautiful. A nice talit, a nice lulav, a nice tefillin, a nice mezuzah. Meaning to say, don't be cheap when it comes to do mizvot. Especially when Baruch Hashem, a person is the able to afford it. Don't wear your grandfather's tefillin and drive a 2020 Tesla or whatever brand, 2020, okay? No, what the Rashi is telling us, that how often do we buy tefillimot in our life? A few years, I bought probably in my life maybe three, four pairs of tefillin. I'm not sure if I'm buying more. I hope yes, I hope not. I don't know what to hope for. But always you get an upgrade on the tefillin. Correct? Maybe 40, 50 years ago, the tefillin were of a different quality than what they are today. Today's tefillimot are state of the art. Beautiful, elegant, not heavy, well done, well finished. Mamash, it's a mechai, as they say. It's very enjoyable to do the mizvah of tefillin or the mizvah of sisit. I remember many years back, if you wore tefillin, mechila, if you wore talet, sisit katan made out of wool, many people say the wool scratches and causes sweating. Today's wool, today's wool is featherweight. Lightweight. Lightweight, feather, you don't even feel it. If you feel it too much, maybe the yeserara is bothering us. Shabbat shalom to all of our audience from Colorado, Denver, Brooklyn, my brother watching, Hazaku Baruch, beautiful. Yeah, my brother, yeah. He, he's a mashgiach. Yeah, no, in, the, in Brooklyn. 
Anyways, let's continue. So today, to do misvot in a beautiful way is easy and practical and accessible. But there is one more concept in the Midah of Aharon Kohen, which this is what we learn towards the end of the fifth week of the Omer, that the word Hod comes also from Hoda'ah. Hoda'ah means to be thankful to Hashem, to be grateful to Akadosh Baruch Hu, to count the blessings that we have. And we all have blessings. And if you don't feel that you have blessings, I can truly tell you stories of people that Lo Aleno Belo Alechem go through real difficulties in their life. So a person needs to understand the Pasuk tells us, very simple, when it comes to spiritual matters, you heard me say this maybe a week or two ago, we look up, Bashamayim, heavenly matters, I look up, who is above me? So I'm able to climb the ladder of spiritual growth and development. And in material things, mitahat. See who is less than us, who has rather less than us to be able to count our blessings. So in a way, Aharon Kohen represents the importance of gratitude to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Sometimes you see, I see, we have a, I don't know what's going on here, but I see in front of me the cards. The thank you cards. Now, you have them in many options. In Russian, English, Slava Boga. Harasho. Thank you. Relax. Don't get me going in Russian. I beg you, I keep it below the radar. This is between me and him only. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then you have Russian, English, French, Hebrew and Spanish. You're missing one. You're missing the Persian, uh, two. You're missing the Persian and the Yiddish version of great gratitude to Hashem. It is nice. We have those cards available in the lobby. I'm not sure if they are behind me, but this, pre oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. To my right, what is the purpose of this prayer? This prayer, you're not obligated to say it. Let's clarify. But it helps us to have the proper language when it comes to be thankful to Akadosh Baruch Hu. You can say, thank you Hashem for kosher pizza. Thank you Hashem for family. Thank you Hashem for swimming pool. You can say, thank you, thank you, thank you. But this prayer, it's opened up to a certain extent that different areas of our life are a bit expanded to be thankful to Hashem for whatever we have in life. This is the opening statement of the Rabbi Haim Palachi in Moed Kol Hai. And it goes on and it says, Velihiyot ohev shalom berodev shalom yoter mishe'ara hodashim. If every day of our life, goal, the goal of our life is to have peace, to preserve peace and to pursue peace, there is key times in the year where this is mandatory. And it says in this particular month, and it says, the Aharon Kahana, the Behinato Behod, Hayeta Mitato Berosh Hodesh Av. It says, why? Because of the passing of Aharon. The Aharon Kohen Yored Alpi Middotav. This is a pasuk from the book of Tehillim. The pasuk says, Zekan Aharon Sheyored Alpi Middotav. Literally means the beard. That's the meaning of this line. The beard of Aharon Kohen that flows through the middot of the face. I'm going to tell you in a nutshell what it means. The Zohar Kadosh explains that the hair from the head and the facial hair is two different spiritual levels. This is Rahamim. This is Din. 
That's why we don't cut the hair now. Although Sephardim allow till the week of Tisha Av, according to the Mekubalim, don't cut your hair during the three weeks. And I believe that the Ashkenazic and Hasidic tradition is not to cut the hair during the three weeks of Ben Amesarim. And the question is, Farvus, why? Why? Por qué? So, halachically we say, because Ben HaMesarim, it's a period of avelut, of mourning. And we know, that's why we don't listen to music. People don't get married. We avoid doing a lot of things that the rest of the year is permissible. Why? Because the mazal is not on the highest level. That's why the first opening line in the halakha concerning Hodesh Av says, Mishenichnas Av Mema'atim Besimcha. It says, with the beginning of the month of Av, concepts of happiness, we decrease. Hasidic master tells us that this halakha, yes, it means what I just said, that we avoid things of happiness and joy, but spiritually, mema'atim, besimcha. He says, how a Yehudi prepares themselves for Mashiach's arrival? With happiness. So even though we avoid happiness, but we avoid the happiness on the technicality department of avoiding buying new things unless they are essential, unless they are necessary, or unless you have a great deal, you have a coupon that expires August the 4th, and you can save 20%. Allah says, go ahead, buy it, but don't use it. Somebody's getting married to the Av. You're going to tell them, wait till Tisha Av to buy bedding and towels for your apartment? No, you understand what I'm saying? So the Lacha gives us the steps, the guidelines, but also gives us the flexibility of what is permissible and what it is not permissible. But it says, in this particular month, we need to invest in Ohev Shalom, Berodev Shalom. Why? Because at the end of the day, we all hope and pray and we say, we hope, the Mashiach comes before Tisha Av. Amen. We all hope for that to happen. And even though it's Friday, and we have a tradition that Mashiach doesn't come on Friday, etc., you know what? I say, let him come, and he'll deal with it accordingly. You know, a hakelo, the Rambam writes, a hakelo bechol yom sheyavo, every day. But what are we doing to bring Mashiach. What are we doing to expedite Mashiach's arrival? So you may say, I'm doing more misvot. Beautiful. Somebody else will say, I'm giving more charity. Hazaku Baruch. Somebody says, I'm being more grateful to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Those are different pieces of the puzzle. But there is one key piece which is mandatory. And that's what Rabbi Chaim Palachi says. Ohev shalom, berodev shalom. The mandatory element of peace. Peace at home. Start at home. Don't try to change the world. Because those who tried, they realize that the world is too big. But our rabbis of Musar tells us that you know how do we change the world? By changing ourselves. When we change we influence, and influencing, influencing people, if influencing people in an adverse manner is a concept, influencing people in a good way, it's even a bigger concept. And that's why we heard yesterday the Pasuk that says, by Ifku Oto Kol Bet Israel, more people cried when Aharon Kohen passed away than when Moshe Rabbeinu passed away. It's an unbelievable concept. Rashi says it. Rashi says, men and women cried when Aharon Kohen passed away. And I believe to say that I recall reading in a Midrash, Vetaf, and children even cried. Yani Aharon Kohen was everybody's uncle, was everybody's grandfather. Why? Short answer, Rashi explains that Aharon Kohen 
had one mission. Whenever he heard that the Bedin was getting ready to divorce people or there was argument among Yehudim, Aharon will step up to the plate, will go to the husband, will speak to the wife, and he will make shalom between them to the point that when Aharon and Kohen passed away, there were thousands of children named Aharon in his honor. Why? Because this couple was heading to get divorced. And Aharon and Kohen saved the marriage. He reignited the love between them. And then a new child came to the world. That is what the Midrash Avotenu writes concerning how many children were. And I'm hesitant of telling you how many were. I'm not going to tell you. But there were five figures. Five figures of children named Aharon in the time of his passing. Let's continue. Sheyored alpi middotav. I explained briefly before the difference of the hair on the head and the beard. This is called zakan in Hebrew. The pasuk says zakan aharon sheyored alpi middotav. Tabalistically speaking, as I said before, the less on top and the more on the bottom, it's beneficial spiritually to the body. Now, I'm not telling you to go and take a haircut number zero. Maybe some should, okay? But I don't want you to break your traditions. Maybe you follow the Mekubalim. That's why it's a bit longer than usual. We're not measuring. But after Tisha B'Av, remember to pay a visit to the barber. It's very important. Not only that, Kabbalistically speaking, I have to say something, and please don't take it at a personal level. But you know how the Zohar calls the hair on the head? Dinim. And you know how the Zohar calls the beard? Middotav. Middata Rahamim, here, din here. That's why in very observant circles and yeshiva circles, what do you do? What do you see? People going around, not the peot, people going around with short haircuts. Besides, we should not do haircuts like goim, has shalom. That's another sh class. But spiritually, less here is the better. Spiritually and in different areas. According to the Kabbalah, sometimes the negative forces hang around the hair. It's a reminder. Take it easy. I don't have the haircut machine. My haircut is easy. Number two, one and a half all around. That's it. I'm the best customer. He makes more money with me than three other guys. I'm 15 minutes, I'm in and out. You understand what I'm saying? He says, Rabbi, I wish I have many customers like you. <laughs> okay? Baruch Hashem. In a more different note, why the beard is considered middotav? What has to do the beard with the middot of Hashem? From a spiritual perspective, this is called the middot of Rahamim of Akadosh Baruch Hu. An expansion. If the face of a person has certain level of godliness, the beard expands that godliness. Hence, you see pictures of yesteryear, great tzaddikim, up to maybe a hundred years ago, a hundred and fifty years ago, all of them had beard. This was a Jewish symbol. Shaving and all these things it became something more on the modern era. And God forbid, we're not blaming anyone. There were many reasons why Hachamim allowed it, and there were many threats, and why the Yehudim did it. But I'll tell you one thing that's written in the holy books. When Mashiach will come, things will be different. But today is not about the beard or the haircut. <coughs> Just happens to be the pasuk of the uh, Aharon Kohen's <laughs> life. But perhaps we can explain 
this even deeper. When we say the word midot, what does it mean? One explanation, what I just explained. Midot of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yod Gimal Midot Harahamim. The 13 attributes of mercy. But Midot, Midot in English stands for character traits of the person. We all have Midot. We all have Midot. If you are a human, you have Midot. That comes with the territory. Like a human being has a heart and has kidneys and has different body parts, part of our personality is having midot. The question is, what kind of midot do we have? Do we have positive midot or we have negative midot? And if we have negative, what are we doing about it? For example, let's say a person takes a blood test, correct? Easy example. You ever see the report of a blood test? They test for many different things. Certain things, the higher the number, the better. Certain things, the higher the number, the worse. And certain things needs to be in the middle of the road. You follow me? They tell you cholesterol up to this number is okay. Below this number is not enough. You have good cholesterol, not good cholesterol. We know this word, cholesterol, and the numbers 200, 300, 100, all these numbers that sometimes you see, blood cells, blood cells count, white cells count, millions. You understand? Midot really is not different. They are midot that the more we have, the better. For example, kindness, happiness, um, easygoing personality, zerizut, alacrity, diligence. You understand? All these are beautiful things to have. But there is the antagonism of all of the above. Laziness, sadness, arrogance, holiness, wastefulness. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know what I think Rabbi Haim Palachi is trying to tell us? That in order for a person to be a follower of Shalom, we need to work on our midot. What prompts a person to make peace with another person? Some people say, Rabbi, why should I apologize to him? Why should I, pol I apologize to her? She started, I'm the victim. That's what people usually say. You know what the Pasuk is telling us? Yored, lower yourself from the horses. Lower yourself. You may be right intellectually, but emotionally, it's not the formula from the Torah. And that's why the Mishnah said in Pirkei Avot, Rodef Shalom. What's the meaning of Rodef Shalom? Looking for peace. Ohev, we all love peace. I would like to believe that all of us, if not most of us, love peace. But how many people pursue peace? Take the initial state, step, rather, to reconcile. And as I said the other day, in the Mizvah of Giving Charity. Mizvah of Giving Charity, where does it start? First we say, charity begins at home. Your home first, your close relatives, needy people that you know, your city, and outsiders. That is usually the lineup. In Shalom, and Hesed is not different. Same ruling. Shalom and hesed to your wife and kids. Once you take care of that, then you cross the line. Then you go to your relatives. Then you go to your acquaintances. Then you go to your friends. Then you go to outsiders. And guess what? 
I remember vividly a few years back how a few ladies called me up to complain for the same thing. What was the complaint? My husband is available for everyone but me. Whenever I ask him for something, he tells me I'll do it later. Guess what? You think that you're doing hesed to someone outside of your home and that is called hesed? Have some not good news to tell you. That's not called hesed. Because you're causing sa'ar ba'ale ha'im to your wife and children. And I show it to them in writing, in the books of Shalom Bayit. And I'm not minimizing, God forbid, the beautiful act of kindness that people do in their life. But we need to remember that we have priorities in life. There are priorities in tzedakah. There are priorities in mizvot. In life, we need to know what are the priorities. But if we make, in Hebrew they say, ha'ikar tafel, be'atafel ha'ikar, the priority becomes secondary, and the secondary becomes a priority, we are, we are putting the socks after the shoes. We're doing things in a reverse manner. You know, we cannot live, you know, on the outside. We need to take care of aniecha, anie airecha, your needy. The Gemara says, you know who are the needy of the person? The wife and the children. This is not me saying. The Gemara says it. Shehi behem teluim becha, the Gemara says. The children and the wife depends and rely on the husband. They look up to the husband. That's why your wife says, Joe, Yosef, Moshe. Why the wife calls the time the name of the husband? It's a God-given way. The Gemara says, help your wife, keep an eye on her, provide for her, do above and beyond for her, love her like you love yourself, do more for her than what you do for yourself. I'm only quoting the Gemara, Rabotai. I'm not inventing the wheel. And I'm sure you know this. And the Gemara says, Shehi, the wife, and the children rely on the father and the husband. Vehu, the husband, talui, bemishe amar vehaya haolam. The husband relies on the creator of the world. One more. The Gemara is very clear in the reasons why the Beit HaMikdash 1 and 2 were destroyed. We know the reasons, right? First, first Beit HaMikdash, the three capital sins, Gilu Arayot, Shefichut Damim, Abu Dazara, immorality, murder, idolatry. Second Beit HaMikdash, Sinat Hinam. Two words, baseless hatred, the famous story of Kalva Sabua, that is a usual mandatory reading uh, in the day of Tisha Av. We hope that we don't have to review the story this year again. Be'ezat Hashem, these are, you know, what Rabbi tell us that these days that we had of Ben Amesarim, they are equal to the day of Rosh Hashanah till Hoshana Rabbah. 21 for 21 days. So we need to understand that we are in key holidays. How sad the time is on a halachic practical perspective. And Baruch Hashem that our holy rabbis in the great wisdom, they gave us some parameters to slow down and to realize, Rabotai, you cannot hide under the covers by saying, big deal. This happened 2,000 years ago. Why I'm paying the price? I ask you a question. If we don't have all these rules and regulations for the three weeks, what will be the difference in this month to think about the destruction of the temple? We think and we speak about the destruction of the temple because we are realizing in our day-to-day -day life, hey, don't listen to music. I cannot get married. I need to think twice. 
Can I do this in the nine days or not? What food I'm going to cook from Sunday on Haim Tovim until next Shabbat? Ah, no meat, no chicken. I need to buy more fish. I need to do more dairy. And then we think, oh yeah, because we are in the nine days. The nine days, destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. So, okay, so hold on. Why the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed? By the way, the Gemara writes that every generation that remembers Tisha Av and commemorates the morning, the morning of Tisha Av, it's like the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed in their generation. So we cannot say, big deal, it happened 2,000 years ago. No, it's happening now. It's happening today. It's happening now. Sin'at hinam. Baseless hatred. But I'm going to be nice today. I'm always nice, I hope. And if one day I'm not, please let me know. Privately, obviously. No, but I mean, you have to be nice. I mean, you want to bring Mashiach closer? Be a nice person. That's all. That's it. Ahabat Israel, Rabbeinu Ari, which is your site, is coming up next week, the fifth day of Menachem Av. Rabbeinu Ari, we'll talk about him by Hashem when that day comes. He established, and I think we heard this yesterday from Rabbi Maimon, they gave a fantastic shiur concerning the prayer that Rabbeinu Ari inserted in the Sidur. I take upon myself the positive commandment of the Torah of loving every Jew like I love myself. Rabbi Akiva says, This is the fundamental of the Torah. Hold on, Rabbi Akiva, take it easy. Who gave you a patent to say this? What about Shabbat? What about Tefillin? What about Kashrut? You know what Rabbi Akiva is telling us? If this area of life is not developed in a proper way of being pleasant, respectful, and good among people, Shabbat, Torah, and Mizvot can go into retirement mode. Shalom from Tampa. Now, how can I say such a thing? How can Rabbi Akiva said, no Shabbat, no Torah, no Kashrut is equally important like peace among people. Like respect among people. You know why Rabbi Akiva says this? Because Rabbi Akiva with his own eyes saw the destruction of his 24,000 students in a very short period of time and there was no one to blame. Don't blame the Holocaust. Don't blame the Inquisition. Don't blame the Crusades. Don't blame the Cossacks. Don't blame the communists. Don't blame terrorism. Yes, these are words that we use in certain parts of history. But in the time of the students of Rabbi Akiva, was there anyone to blame? No one. Themselves. Themselves. And that's what Rabbi Akiva says. People, regretfully, don't pay attention to this topic as much as they should. Maybe here we do, because we speak about it. I'm not sure what other hachamim and places talk, but one complaint that I heard from parents a few years back, which Baruch Hashem today is different, why schools don't develop curriculum in these topics? They invest in Talmudic, Halachic, Humash, all the Mefarshim. But what happened to this topic? And guess what? I shared this with a few principals in town. And they, uh, they made me very happy a few months later how I think from New York, Torah Mesorah and the Hafez Chaim Heritage Foundation and other wonderful programs, they started to develop curriculums in the topic of Midot, to the point that today, the 21st century, there are new children's books that never existed before. Most of the time was stories of Sadiqim, or Mishnayot in a colorful way, or Haggadot of Pesach, or Humashim, 
Today is a new thing. Children's books about Midot. I saw them the other day. I was very happy. How to be easygoing, how not to be impulsive, how to be friendly, how to be respectful. Each one of these titles is a different children's books to start now. As somebody told me the other day, Rabbi, I need help. My child is very impulsive. He gets upset very fast. What do I do? I told them two things. Number one, you're lucky that you're calling me today when your child is a young child and you can reshape re the personality. We're not saying that when a person is older, cannot, has the shalom. There is always room to change and to improve. But let's be honest. It's easier when we are younger. Shalom HaMelech says, Zechoret Borecha Bime Bechurotecha. Remember the Creator when you are young. What does it mean? Yani, don't wait till retirement to say, oh, I'm going to start doing Teshuva now that I retire. Do you think that it's easy to change when a person is ready for retirement? So the younger we are, the easier it is to change and to work and to enhance the personality of the person. So I said to this uh, wonderful lady, you're fortunate that you're calling me at a young age. But I will tell you one thing. If you want to remedy this, your child needs to be exposed to a proper attitude at home. She told me, you're right, Rabbi. It's my husband's fault. <laughs> True story, by the way. I said to her, I understand. The ladies may be laughing now. Why she blamed the husband? Let's be honest. It takes two to tango. Sometimes could be the husband. Sometimes could be the wife. But God forbid. The idea is not to blame anyone. The idea is to understand that children observe, children absorb, and children mimic. Children mimic. If they see that their husband and wife have a beautiful, comfortable, pleasant, loving type of relationship, it's one level. But if, God forbid, the child sees the mother screams at the husband, or the husband screams at the wife, has the shalom, or anything that doesn't go either one of their way, there is a whole gogu magog at home. So what do you expect the child to react? I'm a vater. Mevater means I'm letting it go. That is a beautiful midah to have. Vitur in Hebrew, being easygoing and letting things go is an unbelievable midah to have. I'm not sure how easy it is to change, but our goal should be I need to become that person. And I'll tell you the following. One of the basic elements required to make shalom is vitur. To take the first step. I'm sorry, sweetheart, the way I spoke to you earlier today. Maybe she said something. She pushed the right buttons, which occasionally may happen. And then we had an outburst. Then you came to pray, you listen to the Torah class, you say now to yourself, I'm a horrible husband. I'm a horrible husband. I thought that I'm Superman in Hesed. Now this rabbi is telling me that all the Hesed that I did outside, if it was at the expense of my wife and kids, it goes to a downgrading level. Has Shalom. And I hope that nobody misunderstands what I'm saying. The statement is prioritize our responsibilities and obligations as husbands, as parents, number one. Number two, what it takes effort to make that phone call. It takes effort to step 
to take over the step of going to the person and saying, Mehila, for what transpired earlier today. Because the Yeseradah is going to tell you why. You are the victim. He started. She started. Now you do Ta'anid Dibur. I met the other day a couple. And I told them, I didn't know that you were Mahmir in Ta'anid Dibur. Ta'anid Dibur for the audience means that they don't talk. Three days, husband and wife did not talk. Can you imagine? And not because the wife is out of town. Different time zone. Or it's Yom Kippur. Some people don't speak in Yom Kippur. Beautiful tradition. Not obligated though. But can you imagine that a husband and wife are upset at each other and for three days they don't talk? I'm lying. They spoke. One sentence. The rabbi wants to see us tonight at eight. You must come. That was the conversation in three days. And I asked him, how can you leave not talking three days? We texted only. It's like a girl called me up the other day. Rabbi, I'm very upset. I said, what happened? He says, I was dating a fellow, and he broke the relationship with a text. I called the guy, and I said, how will you feel? You're working for a company, and the company sends you a text. Don't come back ever again to work. Are you going to say amen or are you going to be upset? No, you're right. He wrote her a letter. Very nice. You understand? He realized he didn't want to speak to her. And he understood the reason behind the scenes why. But we realize that we, we are going to have part of our neshama who says, you know what? In honor of Aharon Kohen, take the first step today. The other part of the neshama, the Yesera, tells you, relax. If you do this one time, she's going to expect it every time. Has <laughs> shalom. But this is the Yesera talking. Look how much he hurt you. For example, in a friend's relationship. And that's what it says, yored. Lower your ego. Lower it. For one day, even. In the zehut of Aharon Kohen. The truth is, we can go further, but I think that I'd like to conclude this topic. I'd like to say a short few halachot to benefit those watching and listening through the audio. Baruch Hashem, you heard me in person, but I'll do it quickly. Behurban cheni al sinat hinam. Says, you want to build the Beta Mikdash? Love. Respect. Shalom. Where do you start? At home. Your family, your friends, your synagogue, and the rest of the world. And by Ezat Hashem, if hatred and animosity have the power to destroy love, friendship, harmony, and respect, have the power to the build the third and final Beit Hamikdash. And guess what? We are in the best position. Because we are now in the final week prior to Tisha Av. A week from Mosai Shabbat. In the schedule says, first day of Tisha Av, pending approval. Pending approval. We have the power to change history. With all that being said, I'd like to review very briefly some of the halachot for the next 48 hours, and then Be'ezat Hashem will continue. I'm going to give a chance to Mashiach comes. I'm going to give a chance to Eliyahu and Navi. Maybe he comes Mosai Shabbat, and let us know Mashiach is coming. It's a pasuk. I have a written promissory note from God. The pasuk says, God, Hashem, will send us Eliyahu and Navi to inform us that Mashiach is on the way. How many days Eliyahu and Navi before Mashiach comes, come? There are different opinions. But one thing is for sure. And you heard me saying this last week. And I saw it in writing 
in the Kafahaim, quoting the Eliyahu Rabbah, that every Mosa'e Shabbat is the question mark. Can I go and inform the Jewish people that Mashiach is coming this week? This happens every Mosa'e Shabbat of the calendar. So this week, last week, Perashat Pinhas, that is Eliyahu Navi, and this week, Mosa'e Rosh Chodesh, a Mosa'e Shabbat of Tisha Av, and the following Mosa'e Shabbat, which is Tisha Av, and in the calendar, Tisha Av actually is on a Shabbat. So guess what? The fact that it's on a Shabbat, that's already a good sign. Let's review quickly the halachot. Since we have a mixed audience, I'll try to cover both. From the Sephardic tradition, today, Rosh Chodesh, we are allowed to eat meat, we are allowed to drink wine. The Ashkenazic tradition, I believe they don't. Shabbat, everybody does. Not a problem at all. Next week, Sephardic tradition does not eat meat, does not drink wine. I believe it's the same with the Ashkenazic tradition. The exception in the Sephardic tradition is if there is a Berit Milah, for example. There is a Berit Milah, it's a Keyom Tov, it's a Sauda. And the sim Baale Simcha want to serve meat, they are allowed to. Siyum Masechet, the conclusion of a tractate of Talmud. And they want to make a barbecue. They are allowed to do it. Now, ladies which are nursing and eating protein is beneficial to them. Or ladies that are pregnant and having protein is beneficial for them. And protein in this case, I don't mean fish because fish is a protein too. But I mean specifically meat and chicken. Why? Because there is an element, especially in the beef department, in the concept of enjoyment, in the concept of simha, as the Gemara says, en simha el ababasar, en simha el abayain, wine and meat are, are types of food that bring satisfaction and joy to the person. So ladies that are pregnant, ladies that are nursing, uh, children, according to the Sephardic tradition, below the age of 12, 11 and a half, they don't have to observe this restriction, especially since we need good nutrition, but the Lacha writes that once a child is closer to 12 and up, definitely cannot eat and definitely should not eat, I should say, and after bar or bat mitzvah, cannot eat. Any person, hole, a person has the shalom that does not feel well and eating meat or eating chicken, chicken soup, Jewish penicillin, right? That's what they call it, okay? Huh? Whatever, it's good. Okay, it's healthy. It has a lot of nutrients. And a person doesn't feel well. And having this will make the person feel stronger. The Lacha, at least according to the Sephardic tradition, allows it to do, to eat it without any problem. Now, concerning taking haircuts. As I said before, Mekubalim, no haircuts. Ashkenazim, no haircuts. Sephardim allow it till next Friday. Because the prohibition in the Sephardic tradition is Shavua Shehal Bo, the actual week of Tisha Av. Since this year, the way the calendar is in Tisha Av, we don't have the week of Tisha Av. Shabbat finishes, and right away you go into the fast day, so this concept does not apply. What about eating meat? Mosa'e Shabbat, tomorrow night. Can a person eat meat or not? So there are different let's put it this way, different opinions in the halakha. One opinion says that it fits the tradition of the person to eat meat on Motza'e Shabbat, the person can continue this tradition. But don't start it tomorrow night. Number one. Number two, the halakha says, if you have meat left over for Motza'e Shabbat, the reason was not because you want to play a shtick with the meat and tell your wife, throw in an extra piece. And the intention is to have leftovers for Saturday night. Other opinion says, if you eat the meat up to four hours 
since Shabbat finish is considered Melave Malka and the meat was cooked really in honor of Shabbat and then you are allowed to have it. I am not very familiar with the Ashkenazic tradition. They eat meat Motzei Shabbat? No. Okay, thank you for the confirmation. So our Ashkenazic audience is confirming what we suspected, that the Ashkenazic tradition does not eat meat during Mosai Shabbat till <coughs> next Shabbat, unless certain exceptions are applied. But at the end of the day, how, as much these traditions are in our DNA, let's finish the class with one statement that I said before. All these technicalities is to help us feel that something is different in these three weeks. But remember the ultimate message. If we want to stop observing all these halachot of limitations, of happiness, music, wedding, meat, wine, etc., we need to invest in bringing Mashiach, making peace, bringing harmony among people, making peace and, and, and pursuing the peace seems to be the password to expedite Mashiach's arrival. So let it be the zechut of Aharon Kohen. Obviously, Aharon Kohen uh, carries the zechut of Am Israel. So as the Pasuk says, Be'yasem lecha, shalom. The ultimate blessing, as Rashi writes in Perashat Behukotai, is the blessing of peace. Shalom shakul keneged hakol. Peace on one corner. Money, wife, children, home, cars, and vehicles, all of them are below peace. Because none of the above really are enjoyable if we don't have peace. Peace enables the person to live happily, better, happier life. You live better, is healthier at all levels, as we all know. So, by Zat Hashem, let us hope the eternal lessons of Aaron Kohen really influences us in a beautiful way Amen. to live a happy life, a peaceful life, a meaningful life. And by Zat Hashem, uh, next Shabbat, Tisha Av be reversed into a day of salvation and redemption for all of Am Israel. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom and Chodesh Tov to everyone. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve amen. Rabbi Hananiah ben Akashia Omer, Ratzah Kadosh Baruch Hu lezakot et Israel lefichach. Irba lahim Torah Mizvot, Shneemar Adonai Hafez, Lema'an Sitko, Yagdil Torah ve Yadir, Kaddish. Amen. 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 Yehe Shemeh Rabbah Mevarach Le'alam Le'almei Alma Yayid Barach Amen. Amen. Yehelana Min kodam mare shemaya. Amen. Hayim besaba bishua bini hame. Bereva ya salam. Amen. Amen. Hodish tov.